Hello everybody, this is Fernando, here live one more time. Thought I would do a nice little live stream here as a good, happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. Hope everyone is enjoying a good day off, time with your family, friends, having a good meal. Basically just stuffing out, right, when it comes to eating as much as you can today. Today's probably the only day of the year where one is allowed to do that guilt-free. Hope I hope everyone is doing good. As you can see, this is a special edition, a live version of Mafia and Gangsters. Oh, hello, hello. Another shout out. Welcome. Brand new first one here. Just going to give it another minute and then I'm going to start focusing on the video. But yeah, I thought I would do this. I thought I would do a location hunt when it comes to Goodfellas, one of my favorite films ever, not just, of course, in the mafia world, but overall. Oh, another shout out. Hello, hello. Yo, yo, yo. Happy Gobble Gobble. Hello. Welcome, welcome. We get another cup of coffee. Absolutely. I probably won't take too long, maybe about 15, 20 minutes. I just don't know how long this is going to go. Another shout out, hello, just found your channel in the Zach Baggins video. Oh, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, that one that um, that I chronicled uh, for his haunted museum, especially the one that where I met him, that one is getting a good number of views, so I'm happy that people are finding it. Notification scared my cat, oh my goodness. Sorry about that. I'm going to do a Black Death Friday live. A Black Friday one? Uh, no, I'll have to be working that day. But uh, either way, though, at least this one is definitely a special one for my day off. Two hour live. Now, nah, I don't think I'll have enough material for it. Awesome. Love Goodfellas. Thank you. Much appreciate. I love that film, too. I know so much about it. Like, I've seen the movie. I've read the book. I have the audio book as well. It was actually written as a book called Wise Guy. I've seen so many documentaries on it. So I thought, why not? Let me go ahead and I'll do this live stream here dedicated to some of the locations some of the famous locations there my plan is eventually when i go back to new york city i'm going to try to visit these locations in person but who knows uh, new york city is so big that i'm thinking that the locations are going to be close to one another but i don't know how how, how well that'll work out awesome I'm love good fellas yep yep only saw the movie how are you I'm doing well just resting about to go work out here in a little bit after this. But yeah, let me go ahead and I'll bring this up. So first off, I'm going to showcase this. Obviously, if you're a fan of Goodfellas, if you've seen a lot of the documentaries associated with it, you know who this guy is, right? That's Henry Hill. That's Ray Liotta's uh, character in the film. So he's the one that played Henry Hill very memorably and to this day uh, remains pretty much one of his most popular roles. But the reason I bring him up was because we're going to first visit Henry Hill's uh, famous location, one that had an infamous um, murder that happened there. But yeah, I thought I would bring this up. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase photos, and then I'm going to showcase photos, uh, like first photos of the people, and then try to showcase photos of the locations, and then we'll try to explore it together live on Google Maps. Or in Bing Maps in some cases. But yeah, Henry Hill, he's the one that wrote the book Wise Guy. He's the one that essentially got off scot free because of his uh, witness protection program, despite all the stuff that he did as part of the crew, the mafia crew, the body of crew that he was in. But first off, let's take a look at this. So, this, if this looks nonchalant today, it's mainly because. A lot of people don't realize it's an infamous mafioso spot. This location, which I believe is 11110 Queens Boulevard, you'll see here how it says 11116, but Google Maps is pointing it to 11110. Either way, this was Henry Hill's hangout. This was called the Suite. This is the location right here. So this was the restaurant that he purchased at one point where he wanted to make it just legitimate to just be able to do a real work from it, like in other words, legitimate income. But eventually, uh, it became another mafia hangout for the Barrio crew. And so 
that's that's the place that um, him and so many of the other uh, people within there, Tommy DeSimone and Jimmy Burke and others, and Marty Krugman as well. I'll talk about the more of those uh, guys here in a minute. But yeah, they would hang out at this exact spot. Isn't that neat? Like if you like this lady walking by, if she were to just realize what kind of history this is, this location housed his restaurant, which had so many of their daily and nightly interactions. People would not be just walking by. They would easily just go inside, try to take a look, hang out, you know, maybe even eat something there, at least to experience it in full. That was Henry Hill's sweet location. And then if you ever heard the word or the name Billy Bats from the movie, this is the location where Billy Bats uh, presumably got killed. Like, in other words, he, when he got pistol whipped and he got beaten by Jimmy Burke and then Tommy De Simone, they were the ones that were doing it in this restaurant late at night. Isn't that neat? Like, whenever it comes to this history, it's located nonchalantly right in the middle of Queens Boulevard, just right here. I tried to see if I could find a picture of the suite, how it looked like back then, but it was one of those things that I mentioned before, not just in my past Goodfellas videos, but also I'll mention it here too. Um, it, it was one of those things where when all of this was happening at the time of the Barrio crew and their nightly and daily interactions in the mafia, nobody really cared about them outside of law enforcement. So it was not like people were taking constant pictures of that location. So I couldn't find any, none at all that showcased um, anything as far as as how it looked like back then. But at least this could show something related to it. And then this picture here, next we'll showcase this. Marty Krugman, this is a guy that I made a video for a little while back. And in this case, I was talking about his Just For Men location, like his famous haircut place. He was, of course, infamously played on Goodfellas as Maury, the guy with those wigs that obviously looked like wigs and they easily came off, like it became a running joke. Um, as, in terms of that, and the cheesy commercials, the infomercials that were there, this is him. This is how Marty Krugman looked like in real life. This is how Maury looked like in real life. And he ran that business. And guess what? The business was actually right next to this place. So if we actually travel just a little bit over here, everything that I've read online says it was next to a fire station there on Queens Boulevard. This is the fire station. This is the fire station as it looks like now. So people are stating that just from in location, the one that we had for this guy, Marty Krugman, it was located here at what now is a Tokyo market, or it would be located here at a place called uh, New Pinyang. It looks like it's a Asian cuisine. So either this one or this one, I'm guessing it's this one because it seems like the stuff I was reading online points to it being right next to this fire station. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh no, I'm back, I'll copy. Don't start yet, sorry. Uh, eventually I'll have to, um, I was writing just a little bit longer, but eventually I had to start the video, but no worries, you didn't uh, miss much. I was just going over some of the information on Henry Hill first. So yes, uh, the stuff I was reading, Henry Hill's book and in other uh, articles stated that his business, Marty Kruger's business was nearby Henry Hill's The Suite. And so eventually, Marty Krugman became involved with the Vadio crew just because of proximity. Like they were there. He became, I don't know if, if the word is jealous or he became like uh, uh, somebody that was wanting to have that type of lifestyle. And it's, it's tragic because all indications point, like I mentioned in my video, that Marty Krugman had a pretty successful life. He had his own business. He had another business. He even did something like as far as bookkeeping like he was doing pretty well and so when that happened um he was able to, to 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 stay afloat and you know make some good money but somewhere along the way he decided he wanted to be part of this life and then of course we all know how that ended afterward he was eventually um in, in the book it details that that jimmy burke thought that he was holding back some money like he was stealing money skimming money in other words from some of the book from bookmaking the stuff that he was doing on the sports side and so that was where it led to his downfall. If he was or wasn't, we don't know, but that's what led to it. But yeah, Marty Krugman, this guy right here, his infamous Just For Men is located right there. Isn't that neat again how, how close they parallel to each other in real life? 
interesting stuff. Uh, Kung Pao chicken. I don't know. They probably do have it there. I don't really eat Kung Pao chicken or much uh, Chinese food. One of my favorites, though, is um, teriyaki chicken. I love that stuff, that way they have it there in Vegas. Like that Friday special. <laughs> there you go. Jimmy was scheming some money. I think he was. Like, he was. Um, like, Jimmy was thinking Marty was skimming money, and I'm pretty sure Jimmy was, was skimming money. Everyone skims money in the Mafia. Like, if they could get away with it, they could, even if it risked their lives. But, yeah, this is where the location would be. So, interesting stuff. So, now, the next one I wanted to show is this. Of course, that's him. Jimmy Burke. James Burke, right here. The guy that uh, Robert De Niro infamously played on Goodfellas. He was the boss of Henry Hill, and he was working with the Vadio crew. Uh, did I watch Good Ghostbusters Afterlife? Not yet. I'll probably watch it um, when it comes out, like on streaming. Like if, let's say, it's on HBO or something like that. That's where I'll probably watch it. I hardly ever see any movies now in theaters. It's just uh, with this post-pandemic life of not having to gone to you know theaters in over a year, one gets used to it. And when it comes to that, so I probably won't see it for a while. But yeah, this is him, James Burke, Jimmy Burke, the guy that I was just talking about that thought that, that Marty Kruger was skimming off of him, the guy that ended up getting him whacked, the guy that ended up doing a lot of, 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 of deaths uh, for it within his own crew. But this is him, and then this is the entire crew, or some of them crew themselves. There's Jimmy Burke. There's Tommy DeSimone right here, Joe Pesci's character. Um, obviously in the movie he was played as an older character, but in reality he was in his early 20s. He was in his early 20s, he was tall. You can see that they, he was almost the same height as, as Jimmy Burke, and Jimmy Burke was tall himself. And then also he was um, a body lifter, a, a weight lifter, so he had a pretty fit body. So completely different than what he was portrayed in the movie, but this is him in real life. And then I believe that's Henry Hill right here. And then I don't know who these other people are, but you can easily tell that they're some of them are probably part of the same crew, and then these are probably some of their girlfriends or mistresses. They're all pictured here within Robert's Lounge. Robert's Lounge was the area, the location that they hung out that had to do with a lot of their business, a lot of their activities, where they planned things. In fact, it was at Robert's Lounge where they planned the La Stanza heist. So this was a picture showcasing it. It's a pretty rare picture, too. Like, uh, there's very few pictures of them within Robert's Lounge. Again, like I mentioned a minute ago, because of stuff involving um, the, hardly anyone noticing them back then. But, yeah, this is them. And the reason I show this... Oh, wait, we got some comments. Let's see here. Now, I just insult them a little bit. It's a little out of line. Yeah, there's that famous line from Jimmy. <laughs> it's good stuff. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome. No more shining. That's right. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope everyone again is enjoying this good day off. But yeah, the reason I mentioned this is because, bam, this was Robert's Lounge. And now you'll see that it's called Southside Inn here. I don't know if this was during Robert's Lounge at the time, or it was probably afterward. But yeah, this is how that location almost looked like when they were running it. This was the main hangout for the, the Badio crew. This was their location. And then also, this was a place where they did, like I mentioned earlier, the Latanza height planning and so on. So this is it. Now let's see how it looks like today. And this is pretty neat. This is it. This is Robert's Lounge to this day. It's called now GT Kingston. It's at a place called 114-64 Lefferts Boulevard. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, hello. Happy Thanksgiving to anyone around the world watching the stream. Please hit the like and subscribe. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah, this is absolutely how it looks like today. Um, it's called the GT Kingston Karaoke Bar. <laughs> you can't make this up. Like this was a place where people got whacked. Like people that were people, including Spider. This is where Spider got whacked. If you believe the information that Henry Hill posted in his book, in the basement, right down here somewhere, that's where Spider got whacked. And then on the backyard area, which I'll show some more here in a minute, that's where... Um, some of their bodies were buried as well. And now it's a karaoke bar. Can you guys believe that? Like this dude walking by here probably has no clue that this is an infamous Goodfellas spot. Straight from the Vadio crew, straight from the days of the Mafia when it was in its glory. And, and he's just walking by. This 
would definitely be one of my number one spots to revisit in New York City to try to see it in person. Probably go inside, see what it looks like there. So, uh, Spider had a smart mouth. He did. He talked back to Tommy D. Simone, which you don't do at all. So, you can totally imagine in this neighborhood on a daily basis, this is where Henry Hill, Jimmy Burke, Tommy D. Simone, Paul Vadio, and others, they would just walk around. And knowing how New York City looks like now compared to back then, I mean, there's hardly any upkeep, right? Like, there's not a lot of changes that happen over several years. So you could probably tell that these buildings here were probably there back then, too. Like, this is how that looked like. Same with this stuff over here, too. And so how we're seeing it now is a good representation of how it looked like back then. I mean, it looks like almost it's from the 70s, maybe from the 60s, other than the newer cars. But, yeah. And isn't this cool? This is neat. Now it looks like there's an outside patio, if you could call it that. And so people probably just hang out here and sit, drink on a nightly basis different world different era back then it was the mafia guys doing it and now here you have um i don't know new yorkers youngsters everyone that's out here a nearby in the neighborhood hanging out drinking here so it's crazy isn't it but i found some bonus pictures and i'll show here too so this is a picture of the basement we were just talking about spider right and so again if you if you read the information in the book uh he says that uh henry hill says that I mean, the Simone shot Spider uh, several times, up to six plus times in the basement. This is the basement itself. This is where it would have happened. This is where they would have been playing those card games. And then that's where um, he would have, he would have smart mouth Tommy. And then that's where Tommy would have shot him dead. It would have been here. And then I found this picture, which showcases another version of it, another area of the basement. Isn't this, like, this is history right here. This is fascinating. This is the area where it would have happened. You can see that that's the same outline right here, right? That it showcases around here. So one can totally see that there was probably a table here where they were just playing that card game. Spider might have been over here in this background area, probably serving those drinks, getting those sandwiches, whatever. And then somewhere over here, he would have smart mouth, tell me this Simone, and the rest was history. So isn't that crazy? Like that finding this history is just great stuff for me and i'm glad to be able to share it with everyone here if they dug out the whole area i wonder if they found any bodies well the way this uh, henry hill said in the book was their bodies were there but when their police um informants the people that they had working the police for them told them that that somebody was going to come out some authorities were going to come out to try to find those bodies at that place that's when they were told that um, they need to dig re dig them up and move them elsewhere so those bodies aren't really there anymore. And there have been investigations to try to find more bodies, but no, nothing else is there. Also, another way to think of it is this. Several deaths that occurred here, one would think that their ghosts might be around this area too. This could be a location for ghosts and spirits. Who knows on that? Anyone smart with Fernando, they will dealt with like Spider got dealt with. Haha, <laughs> no, that won't be that far, no. But, but yeah, th that was pretty funny, so... All right. Oh, yeah, I got one more picture. If you want to talk about, again, being smart mouth here, this is those bodies, the area in the backyard of Robert's Lounge. This is the exact backyard. So this is the front yard area right here. And then this is the backyard area. And you can see that this would have been a location where they would have hung out, drank, do, uh, you know, smoked and whatever. Um, and then this is where supposedly in this area and then going somewhere over here that's where they have the um the bodies buried and then taken out and then reburied somewhere else so some people like you see these windows here right and you obviously see like over here that there was people in the neighborhood area over here they would have seen and heard some of that stuff especially late at night whenever all that digging was happening and people were um uh making noise there would have been some people probably hanging out this window trying to take a look, obviously not reporting what happened afterward, um, but uh, but still they would have seen some of that stuff happening because there was nothing there. So, But uh, nothing, in other words, hiding it. But yeah, this is the backyard area of Robert's Lounge where supposedly Spider's body and then also Marty Krugman's body, this guy, oh, I'm sorry, this guy right here, Marty Krugman was buried. He was also buried alongside those bodies too. So interesting stuff, no? Great stuff. 
All right, for now, Smart Mouth live stream edition. Ah, there you go. Uh, no swearing, though, in this part, because otherwise YouTube will definitely flag things. And then final treat that I wanted to give to everyone was this. Another infamous spot of Goodfellas. I mentioned a little bit earlier. That's this, the Lufthansa heist. This is the heist that occurred that was very briefly mentioned in the film. In fact, you pretty much just heard it over the radio. But in reality, it happened here, J here at the JFK International Airport. I found this illustration, um, a photograph that shows illustrated parts. It shows that the van carrying them, I think there was two vans, if I'm not mistaken. It would, they would have gone through here. They, and it says here they clipped past this chain, went over here, pistol whipped any guard that tried to stop them. And then finally they went to this loading area. And you can see that's where the planes were uh, parked and that they would have the money, they would have the jewels and so forth. The stuff that the that the Lathasa heist was trying to, trying to uh, that the people there, the crew were trying to rob. They were robbing money in this case, but you could totally tell that this was uh, an area where planes would have other type of cargo as well. Well, I think I found, it's difficult, but I think I found a location that matches this. In fact, let me go here. I found this on maps. And here it is. Uh, the closest help that I had was this. You see how it says 150th Street, right? The problem is a lot can change over what I think this happened like 40, 50 plus years now. A lot can change into how it looks like. Hello, hello. Another shout out. Welcome. Uh, this showcases 150th Street right here. You can see it here. And if it matches here in terms of this 150th street i think this is it this is the right area so they would have driven over here i imagine that over the years the road would have changed just very slightly you can see that it looks somewhat similar but different than from this area and then the only place i can think of that the planes would have parked we're looking at somewhere over here I think because you'll see, for example, right here, this is an uh, air, airport strip right here. This is where the planes are led on and off um, towards a direction. And so matching it towards this, you can see that there's one over here, and then the plane would park over here, they would park over there. I'm thinking this is the cargo area where the heist would have happened. I could be totally wrong uh, on this. I'm, uh, this is the, unfortunately, this is not something that I can 100% verify, not like the other locations. But considering that I found 150th Street, and 150th Street cuts through here, and it doesn't really go anywhere else. I mean, maybe it also goes over here in terms of 150th Street, but this becomes Avenue. And again, this could have all changed complete direction based on how many years have passed. 150th Street could have been way on the other side. Who knows? But... I'm thinking that this is where it happened. Somewhere in this vicinity, that's where the Lufthansa heist occurred. Nowadays, people just go here. Obviously, like we have people parked in this parkway right here. They're just going to work. Then you have uh, some planes visible parked over here and so on. Like nowadays, they're just pretty much just nobody cares. But this is where the largest, at that time, largest robbery in American history occurred. And it was right around this year. Isn't that awesome? I love that type of, 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 of history of being able to visit it and then take a look and then see what happens. In fact, let's see if maybe they have street side view. So that way we can. Oh, they do. So let's see uh, real quick if maybe we can see how it looks like from their vantage point. So, yeah, isn't that neat? If, uh, this is probably going to be totally different than what it looked like seven or 50 plus years ago. But this is what it would have looked like, hopefully, for them. Traveling across and then going towards this area and then finding like where they would park and then where they would find the security, where they would pistol whip them, where they would go into the cargo area. This is it. This is what it would have looked like from their vantage point. And you'll see right over here that there's a plane parked in that vicinity right there. So again, it kind of matches right what I was saying earlier. You'll see that plane is parked right there and you'll see this plane is parked right here, right? So I think we're close by. Buildings could have been built. Stuff could have been torn down. I don't know. And I could be wrong still. But I think this is the area. But yeah, just wanted to showcase that type of special bonus for everyone out there. 
But I think that's it. That's me just wrapping up the information associated with Mafia Inc. Gangsters Special Edition video, The Goodfellas Locations. So we visited um, Henry Hill's The Suite. We visited Marty Krugman's Just for Men. Uh, we visited Robert's Lounge. We saw some pictures of all the guys and how they looked like back then. And then we saw some stuff um, as far as the inside. And then in, in the case of Robert's Lounge, the backyard. And then a little extra bonus when it comes to the Thonza Heist. I think I found the location. But again, if anyone knows more info, maybe an exact coordinates of, of stuff where I could be wrong and you want to post it there, then post it in the comments. So what do you guys think? I thought this was a really great way to, to share this and then say hello to everyone and uh, at the same time um, share a special edition video too. So hello, hello. Uh, now to talk about monsters. Maybe I might do another live stream. When it comes to monster locations, um, I'll try to do that. I'll see what I can do. What I do for today, just rested. That was it. Definitely lots of work happening in my work. And so yesterday I worked full time. Tomorrow I work full time. Saturday as well. So today is just about resting. And I'm probably going to go see my family on the weekend instead. Um, so not really able to take too much advantage of Thanksgiving. But hey, it was a nice way. Nice restful day at least. So. But again, I hope everyone enjoyed your time here. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thanksgiving monster. I guess anyone makes them super hungry. I know, right? Did I get into the mission earlier? This is the one day that you can easily just pig out. This is the one day that's allowed once a year for everyone to just do what they want. But again, hope you all enjoyed this video. And I'll probably try to do another one soon. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about these videos, especially when I do the, uh, the live streams with the Google Map visitations. I love doing that. I love being able to find this stuff and then share it with everyone. So, all right, everyone. I'll talk to y'all later. So y'all have a good Thanksgiving. Take care, man.